In this video, I want to demonstrate how you can utilize Raycast to create an enemy AI that will chase you when they see you until they can no longer find you. I already have a project here that I'm starting with and I'm going to show you how to add an enemy to this that can use Raycast to find you. If you already have an enemy created that you want to add Raycast to, go ahead and let's go into that scene. If you do not, go ahead and click the plus button to create a new scene and I'll walk you through mine. I tried to keep this enemy scene as basic as possible so we can just focus on the important parts that you can utilize in your own project. I obviously started with a character body 2D and I called mine Ant. He has a collision shape 2D. He is an animated sprite 2D that just has one simple animation of walk. A child of his animated sprite is a raycast 2D that we're going to use to locate the player. For the raycast, the only thing I changed was the target position. So make sure yours is selected, go to inspector, and for X, I changed mine to negative 125 and the Y to zero and then I have a timer. So make sure you have an enemy script, and then for the timer, I created a signal. So make sure you have a timeout signal that goes to your enemy script. Let's walk through this script together. So I have an export variable for my player. We are going to assign this to whoever we want the ant to chase when they see him. I also have a speed, a chase speed, and an acceleration. I have a reference to my animated sprite. I have a reference to the raycast, and also a reference to the timer. I just left the default gravity that comes in the project. Based on your game, you may or may not need the gravity. I have a variable to keep track of the direction of the enemy, and I also have a right bounds and left bounds. These are going to be used for our basic home position for the ant when he's in the wander state. So he's going to stay within these bounds and just pace back and forth until he sees the player. And then I just have an enum to keep track of whether the enemy is in the wander or chase state. And then by default, I'm setting the current state to the wander. On ready, I am setting the bounds of the enemy. I am just taking a position of where the enemy starts, and I am creating a border or boundary to the left and to the right at 125 from the enemy. If I go back into my level preview, what this is going to look like is if I put the enemy right about here, 125 to the right will be here, and 125 to the left will be here. So depending on your game and what you're trying to accomplish, those variables may be different. In the physics process, I am handling gravity, movement, change direction, and looking for the player. In the look for player, which is always running in every physics frame, we are checking if the raycast is colliding. Now the raycast can collide with any collision, not just the player. It can also collide with itself or the level itself. So on top of checking if it's colliding with something, we need to check what it's colliding with. To do that, raycast has a built-in function called get collider. So if the raycast is colliding and it's colliding with the player, we're going to call chase player. What it's doing is it's stopping the timer if one was already going and it's gonna set the current state to chase. So essentially what is happening, when the enemy sees the player, it's gonna stop any current timer that was running and it's gonna enter a chase state. Once it can no longer see the player, it may still be colliding with something else. It could be colliding with itself, it could be colliding with the level if there's a wall. So that's why we need to check both that it's colliding and that it's colliding with the player. So if our enemy is in the chase state, but it no longer sees the player, and it's colliding with something, we're going to call stop chase. Likewise, if the raycast isn't colliding with anything, we also call stop chase. Stop chase is making sure there's no current timer running, and if that's true, it's going to start a new timer. If we come to the timer over here, and we go back to the inspector, I set it as a one shot and 10 seconds. This is important. You can set your wait time to whatever you want, but make sure you check one shot. The reason we're going to check one shot is we want to control the stopping and starting of the timer with code. In our handle movement, it is just checking which state the enemy is in. If it's in the wander state, it's going to use the normal speed. If it's in the chase state, it's going to use the chase speed. So essentially our enemy is moving faster if he's in the chase state. And then we are calling the built-in movement slide. Our change direction looks a little long, but it's pretty basic. We're going to break it down into two sections. This first if section is just checking if it's in the wander state. So if our enemy is in the wander state, we're going to check if our sprite is flipped. My sprite's default direction is pointing to the left direction. So if it's flipped, that means he's moving right. Yours may be different. So in my case, if he's in the wander state and the sprite is flipped, I know he's moving right. I'm then going to check to make sure that his position is not past the right bounds. And if that's true, that he's not past the right bounds, we're gonna keep him moving that direction. If he has passed the right bounds, I'm going to flip him and turn him the other direction. I'm going to flip the sprite, and then I also need to flip the raycast so it's looking the other way. So if he's in wander and he's flipped, that's what's happening. If he's in wander and he's not flipped, that means he's headed to the left. So like before, I'm going to check to make sure he has not passed the left bounds, and if that's true, I'm going to keep him moving left. 
if he is past the left bounds, I'm going to flip the sprite so he's looking to the right, and then I'm going to flip the ray cast so it's also looking to the right. And then the second part is the chase state. So in the chase state, we no longer care about the boundaries. We're going to get the direction we need to go based on the player's current position and the enemy current position. If the direction dot x is 1, then we know the enemy is moving to the right. So just like above, we need to make sure the sprite is flipped and the ray cast is pointed to the right. If the direction is equal to negative 1, then we know our enemy is moving to the left. So we need to not flip the sprite and we need to turn the ray cast to the left. Then we just have a basic gravity function that is checking to make sure the enemy is not on the floor, and if the player, if the enemy for whatever reason is not on the floor, we're applying gravity. And then for our on timer timeout, this is the function that is being called when our timer reaches zero. So if we come back up to the top, when the enemy can no longer see the player, it's going to enter the stop chase, which does not stop the chase immediately. It is actually starting the timer. And if you remember, I set my timer to 10 seconds, so that's going to start that timer. When that timer reaches zero, it's going to then call this function, which is then going to set the state to wander. So our enemy will go back to his wander state. So let's go ahead and add our enemy to this level one. And now we can demo this. And I'm going to add our ant scene. I'm just going to go ahead and put my ant right about here. And if you remember in our script, we set our boundaries. So depending on what your boundaries were set will depend on how far he can travel. Mine are set about right here and right here. And then don't forget, we set an export variable for our player or whatever character you want your enemy to chase. So I need to assign my player to this so it works. So now let's go ahead and run this and show you what this looks like. So as you can see, as the game starts, our enemy is just pacing back and forth in the boundaries that we set. If we jump down here and you can see he speeds up when he sees us and he will continue to chase us. And if we get out of his eyesight, he will still chase us for 10 seconds. Until he goes 10 seconds without seeing us, he'll continue to chase us. So let's show you what that looks like. He's in the chase state. We'll just come up here where he can't see us. And he's still going to chase us. And the 10 seconds ended and he went back to the wander state. To help you visualize this, let's run this one more time but with visible collisions turned on. So in your project, go to debug and turn on visible collision shapes. So as we can see, the ray cast is pointed 125 in front of the enemy's eyes. And then when the enemy flips the other direction, so does the ray cast. Also, you can see that the ray cast turns red when it collides or when it sees a collision. And it's colliding with our world and turning red. That is why in our script, we had to check to make sure that not only was it colliding, but that it's colliding with the player. So if I go ahead and jump back down here, you can see now he sees me. And even though he doesn't see me right now anymore because I'm not in the ray cast, he's still chasing me until that 10 second timer goes off. He still hasn't seen me, and now he went back to the wander state. He's going to slowly make his way back to the boundaries. So if he sees me here, he'll start chasing me. And even when he can't see me, he knows where my position is until that 10 second timer runs out. So he'll just chase me back and forth. Well, I suppose.